In our next lesson on Chapter 22, Protein Synthesis, we want to look at the structure of the ribosome. The ribosome is composed of ribosomal RNA, or rRNA, and protein. Here we have the table listing the ribosome components, and we are comparing E. coli ribosome with that of the mammalian systems. You'll notice in each case there's both RNA and polypeptides within each of the two subunits. In each case there's a small and a large subunit, although the size is varied. The sizes are listed in parentheses, the 30S and 50S in the case of the E. coli ribosome. S stands for Svedberg. It's a coefficient of sedimentation. So the larger that number, the heavier the mass. So again, the small subunit is 30S, the large subunit is 50S in E. coli. Notice that the mammalian ribosome, the small and large subunits, are larger than that of E. coli. There are a larger number of polypeptides. Notice also that in each case, there's only one rRNA molecule in the small subunit. The E. coli large subunit contains two rRNA molecules, whereas the mammalian system has three. It's not important you remember these distinct sizes either of the individual rRNA molecules or the subunits themselves, simply that there is both a small and a large subunit and that it contains rRNA and polypeptides. You do want to remember that the small subunits in each case contain only one RNA molecule and the large subunits contain more than one. So here we're looking at two illustrations of the bacterial ribosome. On the right we have the small 30S subunit and on the left we have the larger 50S subunit. So two subunits, altogether 52 proteins and three rRNA molecules. The gray represents the ribosomal rRNA and the colored portion represents protein. So by comparing these two, you can see that the ribosome is mostly rRNA. And you can see also that it has a very distinct three-dimensional shape. The two subunits are held together by RNA-RNA contacts rather than protein-protein contacts. The internal faces of the subunits contact one another, as though we were to put, to, to put the two palms of our hands together. So this is the nature of the contacts between the small and the large subunits, and we'll see how they come together in the process of translation later. So one ribosomal unit, which in, would include both a small and large subunit, combined one messenger RNA and three tRNA molecules, and we'll see how in just a moment. Remember in our last slide we saw that the ribosomal RNA forms a very complex three-dimensional structure. What we have illustrated here is the two-dimensional structure for the two rRNA molecules that comprise the large subunit in the bacterial system. On the lower left, you'll see the, the 5S rRNA. The rest of this molecule is all one rRNA molecule, the 23S ribosomal rRNA. As you can see, a very long, complex structure. And what you're seeing are the hydrogen bonding base pairing between complementary base pairs within the molecule, a very complex two-dimensional structure. And again, it's going to fold up into a very distinct three-dimensional structure. Remember, the ribosome is a protein polymerase. It is an enzyme. And so we refer to this as a ribozyme, that is, a catalytic RNA. So just as we saw in protein enzymes, they have a very distinct secondary structure based on hydrogen bonding interactions and an even more distinct three-dimensional structure that contributes to their catalytic activities. We see the same in the case of ribozymes or catalytic RNAs. Very distinct secondary structure related to hydrogen bonding interactions and a very complex three-dimensional structure that contributes to its catalytic activity. So there are three binding sites for tRNA within the ribosome. Here we have the large subunit on the bottom of the screen, and we have illustrated the three tRNA binding sites. 
A, the A site is the amino ACL site, as we'll see late in a later video. This is where the incoming tRNA will base pair to deliver the next amino acid to add to the chain. In the center we have the P site, the peptidyl site. As we'll see, this is where the chain extends or grows. The final site is the E site or exit site. Once the amino acid has been delivered and transpeptidation has occurred, the empty tRNA uh, will move to the E site and eventually exit the ribosome. So we have three tRNA molecules at any given time. In the process of translation, how does the ribosome accommodate those molecules? After all, they have that distinct three-dimensional shape and they're bulky molecules. As it turns out, the mRNA makes a sharp bend between the codons in the A and the P site. As we'll see later, the transfer is going to be from the P to the A site. And so that's where the peptidation reaction is going to occur. So those two molecules need to be close enough to carry out the catalytic reaction. However, they are bulky and they have to be accommodated within the same ribosome. And so the bending of the RNA allows these two tRNA molecules to become close enough together to carry out the reaction and yet still be accommodated within that ribosome. This bending may also help to prevent slipping of the ribosome. In our next video lesson, we'll look at the mechanism for the initiation of translation. We'll see what factors are involved and what specific roles they play in that process.